No, not yet. I mean, there's vague rumors, but um, yeah, I think they're in production right now. So we'll see, hopefully over the coming months, um, maybe through summer, who knows? Still waiting on that information. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope she gets involved in Anthony's love life as much as he. <laughs> I think that's one. And then I think, yeah, love is love is very complex and it's never necessarily a happy ending. There's always challenges to face along the way. So I think there probably will be more. Um, and I hope to explore those. Uh, so, yeah, that would be fun as well. It has. It's been really surreal. I think, yeah, the last few weeks have been crazy. And especially because, you know, we're all at home and and so everything's over Zoom or, or Instagram or whatever. But it's it's lovely at the same time because I think, you know, it's nice being at home with my family and getting to enjoy the buzz with them. Um, so there's, yeah, there's nice, there's, there's nice, there's a nice side to it, I think, in that respect. You know, it came out at a time when people really needed an escape. And it really is that. It's such a, it's such an escape from our world right now. And this crazy world that, that we were able to create, which is, you know, thrilling and, and such a feast for the eyes. And yeah, it's, I'm really happy that it's brought joy to people's lives right now. Yeah, so I sent a tape off, as, as most actors do. I just sent a self-tape. Um, and then I think a week later I, I taped for another role they asked me to put myself on tape for another role so I did um, and then I didn't hear anything for about three months and I was living in LA at the time and then suddenly I sort of get a call saying will you come in and meet Chris Van Dusen and Betsy Beers at Shondaland um, so I met with them we sort of read through the scenes and then a few days later they said will you come and read do a chemistry read with reggae um, who they'd already cast as Simon. So, yeah, so I went in sort of a few days later and read, read with reggae, read Shonda, Shonda Rhimes was in the room. Um, but yeah, it was, it was me and reggae and, and Shonda and the director, Julianne Robinson and Chris Van Dusen, our showrunner, in the room. And I don't know, there was something quite, you know, it felt good and it felt, um, it felt, there was something exciting about that. There was something exciting about reading with him. There was, you know, I think with acting, sometimes there's something quite and intangible. You can feel, and I felt that, but as an actor who obviously is used to a lot of no's, I think you push that aside and it might not, <laughs> it might not be the one. But yeah, the next day I, I got a call saying, it's yours. Can you fly out to London in like a few days? And it was, yeah. And then it was sort of a whirlwind, whirlwind from there. Yeah, I mean, I think um, we we were really lucky in the sense that we had like six weeks of rehearsal time um, before we started shooting, which was amazing, really. And, you know, it's not often that you get that time. So that was we really cherished that. And we had so we had to do so many dances throughout the throughout the show. So a lot of our time was spent rehearsing, rehearsing the, the amazing sequences that you see. Uh, and really trying to get that right. And so we spent a lot of time, you know, in the in rehearsal rooms. And I think that, you know, it really, it, it really helped form a chemistry. There's definitely something to be said for, for having a dancing partner and trusting each other and having to create something together, which then really informs the performance, I think, in a way. So, yeah, that really helped. And... And all the, we did a lot of intimacy coordination as well, which we actually rehearsed before we started filming. And, and that was really informative. And I think it just enabled us to feel really safe around each other. Like there was no, you know, we formed a friendship, we formed a, a working bond and we both felt safe within that. And we talked a lot about what we wanted out of it. And yeah, I think just having all that time is such a gift. Uh, There's a lot of that and, and the right and the writing is just amazing and a lot of it's in the writing to be honest and the wonderful music that you hear yeah it was it was my first time working with an intimacy coordinator and it was a brilliant experience I felt so safe and 
it just really felt like a stunt, you know, you were a stunt so that no one gets hurt, looks good and looks really real, but no one, no one gets hurt or injured. And it's very much like that. You're rehearsing it so everyone feels comfortable and no one, you know, there's no line that can ever get crossed because it's very specific on what you're doing. Um, and also it just makes everyone feel comfortable, not just the actress, but the actor and the crew members. And, you know, I just think it, it makes for a safer space and therefore you can you can let loose a bit more mm -hmm. and, and feel freer within that role that you're playing. So it was so helpful. I've I've done, you know, intimacy scenes without a coordinator in the past and it's a very, very different experience. Yeah, I just, I just hope that it sort of becomes a necessity, really, that, that you sort of have to have. Yeah, Daphne was interesting because a lot of it was sort of her attending balls and this outer, outer sort of shell that she portrays to the world, which is sort of this perfect diamond or, or whatever. So I think um, we were really lucky in that I, I, we rehearsed all that sort of stuff. We did a lot of etiquette and um, our, our, our choreographer would talk about posture and all of those things were were something that we rehearsed and, and got right and figured out. And then for me, it was just really important to know what was happening underneath all that for Daphne and, and what she really, what was really going on when she was doing all these things. And you know she's this is her going out into the real world for the first time so it was finding that innocence and that strength um that she has as well um that i think was really important and again really lucky got the first six scripts pretty soon into it so i was able to just sort of plot her journey because she has such an amazing story arc as well she sort of goes from the really naive and innocent and uncertain about this big wide world to to a married duchess well i hope I'm, she she becomes a woman essentially so it was really important to get that journey right and make it feel honest and and real and not um not animated you know it was a real human being who's has fears and um worries and so i played a lot with the anxiety underneath that as well there's always something her heart sort of beating out of her chest in every scene because it's it's quite a nerve-wracking thing to be you know bowing to the queen and everyone having you know everyone looking at you and um trying to find a husband I mean it was quite there was quite a lot of pressure placed on them so yeah it was finding that as well people I've always found people in the arts just really fascinating and every everyone in my family has a weird leg in the industry which is my grandpa was a was a director and my grandma was a was a third ad so there were you'd always hear stories growing up just of being on set and of actors and that was i think the first thing that actors just seemed like really fascinating people and i just really remember the stories that my my parents would tell of of these amazing actors and and that, so yeah, and then it was just sort of figuring out, okay, what is, what is this? What, what part of this business do I want? Because I wanted to be a part of this family. I think I just heard that, you know, all these talented people coming together to make something. Such an exciting thing, you know, it's not, not just the acting, but whatever part you are of making a production, especially something like Bridgerton, there's so much talent and they're all coming together to make this beautiful thing. So that was really exciting. And then I just, yeah, started falling in love with films and watching <laughs> my mom. I went to see her on set a bit and yeah. And so, yeah, the, the bug, the bug kicked in pretty early. And by 13, it was, that was it. I was going to be an actor and no one was stopping me. <laughs> I was thinking about going to drama school when I was about 18, but I luckily got you know I, I got a part in something and then got a part in something else and then suddenly I was like maybe I should just see where this takes me dead yeah it's been a weird journey I've spent a bit of time in LA and a bit of time in New York and I'll attend and even in London I'll sort of attend the odd odd class I've attended little classes and stuff but never had proper training no which is 
it's always interesting, especially in England, because a lot of the actors you're working with have. So yeah, it's interesting, but you learn so much on the job, I think. And I learned, I mean, even something like Bridgerton, I learned so much just making that show. So yeah, just, just soaking it in, I think, um, however you can. Yeah, it's funny. I did go through a stage of, of being, even like right before Bridgerton. And I, I it was, it, yeah, it is. It's funny. There's so many peaks and drops and there's so many, so much rejection. And to be able to be an actor and have really thick skin and also be able to emote is quite a difficult thing. It is about just, I don't know. I think uh, when things started changing for me, it was like, I'm not going to go in and sort of, try and beg for a job I'm just I'm gonna start going in and just thinking I'm just gonna give you what I think's right and either you like it or you don't and that was a little bit of a turning point for me when I just thought sort of you know fuck it like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do what I think's right and I'm and that's fine and that they either take it or they don't um it's something about I mean there's something to be said for like playing a bit hard to get in that in those situations it's like you have to go in thinking I've, you know, I think this is right and you either take it or leave it, but I'm not desperate for the job, which is obviously really difficult when you're, you've got pill, bills to pay. Ooh, I'd say, I'd say just keep going because it, it's funny, but it's only when you get a bit of, you know, when you actually start working or get a bit of success that you look back and you go, oh, I didn't get that because it wasn't right and it wasn't the right time. It will come at the right time. You just have to keep going and you have to keep believing in yourself and and don't try and change for anything because what makes you unique is what's going to get you a certain part. It just has to be at the right time. So yeah, timing is, is a lot about the industry being in the right place at the right time so just just keep going and be resilient and and learn your craft in whichever way you can um but know that it will come when it when you're ready um it will come <laughs>